I want to come at this from a particular perspective and, and talk about a particular potential use of data um, that, that I'm getting increasingly involved with. And, and that's in connection with the city deal. Um, the Glasgow city deal has associated with it uh, a commission for economic growth. And what we're been asked to do as an independent body chaired by the principal of the University of Glasgow, Anton Muscatelli, is to look at how the expenditure that's been allocated to, to Glasgow city region, which is 1.13 billion, um, is going to deliver the outcomes that are being projected, which are 29,000 jobs, uh, and a particular level of what's called GVA growth. It's a, a technical measure of, of growth. Um, and I want to talk about the role of data in that because it's a huge expenditure for everybody. And increasingly, I think, um, policy is shifting from an approach where you took a decision and then hoped it would be all right and if it sounded good, it would be okay, to a system of contract, basically, now, where money is allocated on the basis that you deliver a particular return. And the onus is on you to be able to demonstrate that you're able to, to deliver, deliver that return. And there's some really interesting issues, in my view, about how you go about that and how data can actually feed it into that, which might affect a number of things ac across the public service look looking ahead. So the actual city deal that's, that's been struck in Glasgow um, is a deal with Glasgow and the Scottish Government and the UK Government. And the parameters of it are really, as I said, quite narrow. They're about um, jobs growth and they're about GVA, additional GVA per pound spent. And in that sense, the, the primary role of the Commission is a technical task. It's to contribute to the design of a, a local evaluation framework that if everything was done property, properly in terms of specifying the, the projects and, and managing everything, uh, that the city deal will deliver what was, what was promised. But the way in which these deals are constructed in Glasgow's isn't unique was through a, a kind of, I suppose, a data modeling exercise where, if you like, historical data was fed in about, you know, the performance of Glasgow city region, performance of other regions, and what happened with our road structure. Quite a complicated process of essentially historical data. And a model was produced out of that, as if you took forward particular initiatives, then in the end you would get certain kinds of results. Nobody can explain how that model works, uh, not even the people who actually produced it. Uh, it's highly technical, it's mathematical, there's all kinds of statistical structures to it. But what we have to do, I suppose, is identify the logic chains, you know, the things that kind of link together um, the inputs, the infrastructure investment, with the outputs, you know, which is the for example, the number of people using a particular transport facility, and then the outcomes, which are supposed to be additional, additional jobs. So we, we need to, to be able to, to construct that. And that poses us questions about what data we need for validating the effects and also the attribution, uh, how, how, how these things are, are linked together. So those, those are the core tasks. Under the terms of the city deal, this kind of information is needed at different stages. We're not just doing a summative evalu evaluation, saying by the end of the process, we have delivered everything that was set. I mean, the deal actually involves a process of what's called gateway reviews. So money is released at different stages through, through, through the review based on, on where you are with that, with, with that process. So it's very important to the, to the city and, 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 and its partners that we actually are able to design an evaluation that feeds back to the, the City Deal Cabinet at key points. And in that sense, what we need to have is a continuing constructive relationship that allows the people who are actually, you know, if you like, at risk in doing, doing, doing the projects to maximize the return for the investment. And that's not just in terms of growth, although that's the, the actual deal that's been struck, but they want to do other things with it. They want to address what's called inclusiveness issues, the wider inclusiveness agenda, which the council has, which the Scottish government has, less so the UK government. Um, and there, the objectives there 
are less tightly set. You know, we've got very specific objectives in terms of econ economic growth, less specific objectives in terms of, in terms of the, these other things. The city deal is intended to distribute benefits across the authorities and create more employment opportunities for people living in less affluent areas. But we don't have aggregate targets for inclusionary outcomes or me mechanisms really beyond the selection of projects for delivering the aspirations that have not yet been, been identified. So, how do we go about this? I mean, we're not quite clear what it is we're trying to do. We know we'd like to do some nice things. Uh, we know that there's added value to it. Um, how, do we, how, how do we do that? And one of the things we're thinking about doing is establishing a small set of carefully selected measures that have the potential to capture these inclusionary outcomes. But what we have to be aware of is, is that there may be complementarities between inclusionary outcomes and growth outcomes, but there may also be trade-offs. You know, so it may actually, in some circumstances, for example, if you put all the investment in Glasgow, then you know, Glasgow might benefit more than, let's say, Inverclyde or, or, or wherever else. There has to be a distributional process. And what we might want to do as well is to identify particular groups that you'd want to support. So you might, for example, want to look at lone parents. How do they benefit from this? How do black and ethnic minority people benefit from this? How do young people benefit from, from this? Or, or some, other, some other targeted groups. So you develop a kind of a policy framework for what you're trying to do. And then what you're trying to do is to construct the data that allows you to measure and specify what it is that you, 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 you're, try, you're, try, you're trying to do and inform the policy of how you achieve it. So, for example, you might make decisions about how you did your procurement link, linked to this, or you know, whether you concentrated on reclaiming vacant and derelict land in areas that are immediately adjacent to poorer areas rather than more affluent areas. So you might make discriminant choices about what you did in terms of the growth impact and the inclusion, inclusionary impact. So, you know, What's going on here? I mean, let, let me just kind of try to draw some, draw some, uh, some lessons out of this task. In the case of city deals, large sums of public money are being targeted on the delivery of specific outcomes through a deal in which success and failure and whether the tranche, next tranche of money is explicitly dependent on evidence. So evidence is going to drive what happens here. And you know the councils and others, government, are actually going to have to be able to explain what they do and justify their policy based on evidence. There's a real focus on data in, in this, this process. The validation process for this is going to be rigorous. It's not just gathering data, it's going to be analyzed to death, and you, you're really going to have to be able to, to show that your data captures, or the, the way in which you analyze the data, captures exactly what's going on and just justify it, and there'll be all kinds of peer review processes attached to that. You've got a question about what kinds of data might be of, of use. As I've said, the way in which the deals were constructed was you know, based on, if you like, traditional economic data, so surveys, aggregate economic data of, of that, that, that kind. But what we've got available in Glasgow and in other cities is different kinds of data that maybe wasn't available before and hasn't been fed into the model. So you've got sensor data, you've got administrative data that councils and others have. You've got, in Scotland, you've got um, input and output data that we've actually got that isn't available in the rest of the UK. And above all, you've got the capacity which, you know, Vono, I'm sure, will we'll talk about it, you know, with, with great enthusiasm. Possibility for using real-time and synthetic modeling data to do this. So instead of actually you know, looking at year end to see how many cars have gone along a road. You can actually do it minute by minute, almost second by, by, by second, and, and do some really interesting patterns about um, that allow you to see before you've made a decision on, on infrastructure investment, or even while you're making decisions, discriminant choices in ways that you simply weren't able to do before. You're able to look at who's using what piece of transport, you're able to look at a whole series of things that, that simply weren't possible before 
because of the, the nature of the data that's now, 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 now being created. And that expands the quality of the logic chains that you're able to, to create. So instead of you know, the, the black box model, you're actually be able to produce very concrete information about what's going on at a fine level of granularity, potentially. Um, and that can feed into other things as well. It might not just be about the city deal. It might be, for example, about service design across a whole range of things. So the information that authorities are being obliged to gather for city deal, they might be able to use for, for other purposes and use the, these techniques that, that have not been available before. And what that's going to create um, in Glasgow, and I think it's going to create it in Manchester and West Midlands and, and, and other places that have got city deals, is the potential for data to move out of, for example, uh, the silos of the people who collect it in the first place. So instead of data being defined by local authority boundaries or data being defined by um, departments within local structures, different kinds of data are going to be brought together and used to, to, to get uh, a much more refined structure of, of, of information. So although the initial focus for this is actually about providing an evaluation for a city deal and see whether we can get the money from, from central government, the reality is it creates an opportunity for local government and local government's partners to think more carefully about what they know about what's going on in, in the area that they, they're trying to cover, to work together at a city region level and to make, you know, policy choices that actually they can do on the basis of, of, of data that they don't have to wait three years until they can assess, if I can put it like that. The great advantage of the kind of big data we've got now is you don't have to wait you know, this lag period until, 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 until you can use it. And there's another dimension which I'm just going to end on, which is that it potentially, this kind of data, allows people to, much, to make much better or better informed policy choices. I mean, I, I spent some time in politics, and sometimes when you're making policy choices, you are, in a sense, choosing in the dark. You don't actually know what the effect is of the, the choice you're going to make. Now, potentially, data and data analysis, and the two have to go together. It's not just about data, it's about how you use the data and understanding how that data can be used is really important with, within this, might allow you to look at different futures or different options or different alternatives rather than testing them out and finding that you've made a mistake, you know, two years later or three years later, whatever. So there are, I, think, I think there are all kinds of opportunities in, in data to actually think about how we run things better and how we govern things better and how we get more people involved in making the choices and in making the choices that we make more explicit. So all of these things can, can run together. And I think the other thing we can do is actually think seriously about the efficiency of, of delivery of service. So you know, we all know that, that funding is, is tight uh, for all kinds of, of things in the health service and local government and, uh, uh, and whatever. If we can actually get people's needs you know, more clearly defined, so that you can actually allocate or make service decisions that allow resources to be more appropriately applied, and data can make a big impact on that. For example, you know, look at the interface between health service and social care. If we had better information about how we deliver social care to whom, we could actually probably um, reduce the, the level of demand on, on acute care services, and that would be economically effective, but it also would actually be better for the people who are using these services. If you can find ways in which data can actually move in, in that direction, then that's something that's really worth, really worth working towards. I think we're at the relatively early stages of this, where you know, there's a lot of cutting edge work being done in UBDC and in, in, in other places along these lines, but it's actually getting that to the point where people are using it and, and people know how to use it is, is really where, where we need to go. But I think it's a very interesting time to be talking about the possibilities of this and the dynamics within the governance arrangements we've now got that are actually driving this forward. It's not just a group of people who are interested in data you know, who are going to find that the world is, is, is changing and find that interesting. I think more and more policymakers, 
uh, people who run things are actually going to find that they, they can use data to do things that they haven't been able to do before, and that's what's really exciting about where we're headed. Thank you.